Welcome back to Louis Body and Mindful Caregiving. My name is Crystal Jakowski, and I appreciate you coming and joining me here today on this podcast. Um, first off, what self-care did I do? I spent a little time in the pottery barn, meaning that I love to throw a little clay every now and then and create things with pottery. So um, it's meditative and my mom, when I tell her I'm going out there, she knows that she can't, she encourages me and she knows that it's a peaceful place for me. So she says, okay, you let me know when you're done. So um, the Pottery Barn is a place where everybody leaves me alone and I shut off my phone and I spend two or three hours enjoying. So I hope that you can find something that you can do that too, where you can shut everything off and people understand and respect that you need that time and space. It's a huge gift. And one of these days I'll make it so that I'm there every week instead of on occasion. <laughs> Today I want to talk about support and the myriad of ways that support can come in for you in your life, especially as a caregiver and whether it's a person that's, whether you're caregiving somebody with dementia, Alzheimer's, um, anything under that dementia umbrella, or you're caregiving family members, kids, whatever kind of caregiver you are, I think that uh, support is unbelievably important. When you're a caregiver, your relationships of before being a caregiver and after being a caregiver are vastly different. And you will have people who are still there in your friendship circle that really want to continue being a support for you. And you're going to have people who are, they really just don't get it, or they feel like it's too overwhelming and it's too stressful, or maybe it's depressing for them and they can't handle it. And so they're going to kind of distance themselves a little bit and pull back. You need to respect that and understand that there are some people that just will not be able to handle what you're going through or understand it. And they will need their own space. They will choose out for a time. And it's possible that they'll come back later and it's possible that they won't. And yet it hurts less when you recognize that they need to take care of themselves, their selves, and you need to take care of yourself. You don't need to be um, navigating their issues just like they don't like they, they they don't necessarily have the bandwidth to navigate yours or be the support that you need. And to try to talk to somebody who doesn't have that bandwidth or doesn't know how to support you can be really frustrating and just avoid that frustration and find a new support. So um, there's so many things going through my mind right in this moment. And, and um, I didn't write down my thoughts. So this could be all over the place. And yet I'm hoping that it's coherent enough that we can flow from one thing to the next, to the next support groups come in a myriad of forms. Your, if you have a life partner or marriage partner, whatever that is, um, they end up kind of being your first support group, which is going to your first support person, which is going to change that relationship and dynamic a little bit. And it could be that you need to add counseling so that you can communicate really well with each other. It might be that you already have really great communication skills. That person that is the closest to you will be the one that becomes your sounding board and support as you navigate the crazy stuff. Now, there have been multiple times with my mom, where she would go into the hospital and there would be a problem or um, she would decline really for a couple of days. And I would be emotionally like, how do I navigate these? How do I, how do I navigate this? How do I work through it? What do I do? Or um, like with her diabetes, her, she would tank and then she would spike and then she would tank, she would spike. And, and um at, for a long time, she was super, super high. She was at 350 and above 350. And we needed to bring that down. And so we got her on medications and we balanced that out. And then um, she wasn't making really good choices and it was tanking. And the problem with that is that if it tanks for too long, then her symptoms can be 
very similar to dementia. She can be confused. She can be forgetful. Um, she can be lightheaded because her brain is being deprived of glucose. And my mom didn't care about eating when it was low because she said she felt fine. Um, and I was really frustrated with that. And my husband and I would talk to him about it. And he said, well, have you thought about reducing the medication that is bringing it down so that it doesn't go down quite so far? And I hadn't thought about that because I was so focused on the problem of getting her to eat the right way. And it took an outside person, um, a sounding board, a trusted friend, my husband, to help me see other possibilities. So a sounding board, your partner, whoever that is, is going to be kind of your first line. They'll be able to encourage you to do self-care. They'll be able to support you. They'll be able to help you see outside the box. It is a hugely important position to have somebody in. Um, the next layer of support, my next layer of support is um, my siblings. And I've told you that they all live out of state. But the thing is that I needed to be able to tell them about my mom and where she's at and then express where I was at as well so that everybody was in the same understanding. And the thing is that I did not want to have to call everybody separately. That was four different phone calls. I'm reliving the stress and the overwhelm four different times, relaying the same message four different times. And what if I forget something with this person or tell something extra to that person, then I have to go back and make sure that I did it. And so I finally, I told my siblings in the very beginning, I said, well, I need something where if I post there, that everybody has to look, everybody knows what it is because there are some people like email. Some people like things like Marco Polo, where you can send videos back and forth. Some people like a phone call. And the problem is that as the caregiver, it is first off draining to be the caregiver. And second off, what if you have to call everybody and navigate that? It is unbelievably even more draining. And so right off the bat, find a way that you can dispense the information to the most um, to that center core group of people as easy as possible. Whether that's you tell one and they're the point person and then they let everybody know. We, my sister um, teaches archery and she has access to this thing called band and the school systems often use it. Um, and all of my siblings are now on this one thing in band and it's an app on their phone. And if there is a note in band, they know that it has to do with mom and they need to read it. It takes the pressure off of me because I don't have to wonder who do I call first and what do I do? It also means that I have an outlet. I can let them know what's up with mom, how she's really doing, what the latest doctor's appointment said, what the latest meds are doing and how she's reacting to that, what the side effects are. I can let them know how um, this trip went. I can let them know um, about her diabetes. I can let them know about my personal well-being and her personal well-being. It's a beautiful space and I know that they will read it and they can respond to it. They can check in with me and say, hey, how are you doing? That is a support group. And the people who um, receive that then have information that they can then react on, whether it's calling my mom and checking in on her and saying, hey, I just wanted to let you know I love you, or calling me and saying, hey, I love you. Um, we're coming out to visit or whatever that is. So that's my next level of support. Find that level of support. What is it that can help you? Now, there are also support groups. If you go to your local senior center, mine has a support group strictly for caregivers. But it also has a support group for people with dementia. Remember the umbrella term dementia, which is Alzheimer's and vascular dementia and um, Lewy body and all of the other things, Parkinson's, everything that's under that umbrella. Um, so it is for people with dementia and their caregivers. So you can go to this and your person gets to see that a lot of other people are dealing with it. And you as a caregiver get to see that other people are working on it and you get to talk about it. So 
that is a group support system that can really help you out. Uh, there are a ton of different support groups on like Facebook, where you can look up and say, I want to be a member of this support group or that support group. And there are the several different forums that you can go in. So if your person has a different type, may, I'm talking, I'm specifically specifically Louie body because that's what my mom has, but there are a ton of other ones with a specialty on specific types of dementia. And being connected to that community means that when I am really struggling and upset about something that's going on, I can post in there and then people are able to give advice and say, Hey, you know, I went through this exact same thing and this is what I did. Or have you thought about um, bringing this person in or this kind of a group in and reminding you that it's okay not only that, for me, um, I am a member of a couple of Facebook ones. And for me, every now and then I go in and I read them. I've only posted once. But I go in and read them because reading them, simply reading them is soothing to see what other people are going through, see the challenges that they're going through. Sometimes I get to say, I'm glad that mom's not there yet. And other times I'm like, Whew, take a note because she could be going there and you may need to take these steps, like take a note of what they're doing and how that's working for them so that I can work on some kind of a progression. Because remember, Louie body is not, there is not a specific this then ha happens, then this, then this, then this. Louis body is so individual because of the random way that the protein deposits are in their brain. And so my person's going to be completely different from your person, completely different from another person. And so, so it's great to be aware of all of the possible things that might happen and yet might not happen and be able to say, at least I'm not there yet. I'm going to find some peace in knowing I'm really sad for them. And that is really a sucky place to be. And yet I'm not there yet. And I'm not alone. Other people are dealing with this. And not only that, I have a group. If they can go to this group and get that great advice, then I can go to this group with whatever issue I have and get advice as well. So we're talking your partner. We're talking friends. I have friends. I want to jump back to friends for a second because there are friends that have kind of stepped away, which is perfectly fine. I totally understand this is not something um, that they are ready, able to work with, and I don't blame them. Um, some of them, it's traumatizing because they've also gone through it or they are going through it and they just can't, all they can deal with is what they've got. Um, but I have new friends that have come in from other associations. Like I hold a death cafe where we just get together and have coffee, tea, and cake. And we talk about anything end of life. And um, it's been amazing how just being open has opened new doors and new friendships and people have come in. And some of my old friends, it's more of a hey, I don't need to talk about mom because I really don't want to talk about it, but I do want to be together and I'm grateful that I can just be a sobbing mess on your couch. It can be low energy and we can sit around on the patio and enjoy the sunset. Or there are just those people that I can be exactly how I am, very authentic in the moment and they understand that and we don't have to talk about the heavy stuff and we might find a couple things to laugh about we might have a sweet tweet or go to brunch or something together and they accept me exactly where I'm at and how I am in that moment and it doesn't matter and those are precious just as precious as the ones that for example the caregiver support group or the dementia and caregiver support group or the Facebook support group. 
The last support I want to talk about really quick is finding a counselor. Now, a therapist. I it it literally just kind of fell into my lap. The um neurologist that we had that did the testing, she looked at me one day um towards the end of the testing and she said, Do you have the counseling and support that you need. And, and that was early on. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's not a big deal. But then two months in, she texted me and she said, um, you said that you were good. And this just came across my desk. And this is a person that is versed in caregivers of dementia of people who have dementia. And, um, if, if, it feels like a good thing and feels like a fit, then I encourage you to reach out to her. Uh, and if not, no harm, no foul. I just, I was thinking about you and this came across my desk and I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So I went to this gal and I'm going to be honest with you. The first meeting I left frustrated and annoyed. And I went home and I told my husband, I don't think I'm returning. I really don't think I'm going back because in that meeting, she was trying to answer my, my answer, the question, like finish my words, finish my sentences. And I didn't feel like she was fully listening to me and where I was at. And I knew that it was a get to know you kind of session. I knew that it was a, let's just lay the groundwork and the foundation, but I, I've done a lot of personal work. I'm a minister and a life coach. So I've already done a lot of spiritual work and a lot of inner child work. And um, so she was treating me as though someone who I was someone who was just coming in and hadn't really done counseling before and didn't really know what I was getting into and hadn't done any of that work. And like the last 15 minutes of the meeting, I basically said, look, I just want to tell you this about myself. I'm very spiritual. This is my profession. I know all about self-care. You don't need to tell me that I need to do self-care because I am perfectly aware of that. And these are the things that are important to me. I don't want to have regrets, meaning I don't want to regret putting my life on hold to take care of my mom. And I don't want to regret treating her poorly, meaning that I want to make sure that anything I do, like I want to put my life on hold enough to give her that love and support. And yet I don't want to lose myself in this. I don't want to treat her poorly and regret the lack of a relationship that we have at the end of it, because mentally I go from being a loving daughter to a worn out, burned out caregiver. Like I, it's a different state of being and I, I'm not worried about the self-care because I know I've already got that. And so I just kind of went down and I had to tell her and then I left her office and I told my husband, I'm not going back. But then the time came for my next and I went ahead and made an appointment because I couldn't tell her in person that I wasn't coming back. Um, and the time was coming up for the next appointment. And I was like, do I want to go? No, I think I'll cancel it. Do I want to go? No, I think I'll cancel it. Um, and then I said, no, I'm going to go. I'm just going to give it another try. So I went in and this time it was a completely different experience. This time, this session was much more along the lines of who I am and what I'm dealing with and the spirituality part of it. And it was very, very helpful. And because she is a therapist for people who have Lewy body or terminal illnesses, basically. Um, she knows what I'm going through. She knows the progression of the disease. She knows the challenges that I will face. She is perfectly aware of that. And that means that she is able to give advice and support based on where my mom is at where we could or could not be going and how I can deal with that, how I can work through it. And it has been amazing. Now I've done counseling in the past and that's how I did a lot of my personal work and how I was able to clear out 
a lot of old hurts and ghosts. <laughs> um, and so this was really good. I encourage you to find that therapist. And I don't want you to get just a regular therapist. I really encourage you to find someone who specializes in caregiving, specializes in what you are going through in this life right now, because that caregiving is completely different than someone who is simply living their own life and trying to get through the challenges. It is vastly different. And you need a counselor, a therapist who understands that who understands the challenges that will be coming for you so that you can work through them. Support is so hugely important. And having multiple avenues means that with her, I work through them and she helps me emotionally, mentally fix it. With Facebook and that one, I am able to ask for advice with my mom or read and see what other people are going through with my friends. I'm able to just be, whether it's a bump on a log or a happy person enjoying the moment, or I'm able to talk through some of the weight because some of them have gone through this with their parents or similar aging things with their parents. And then my husband, my partner, who is able to be that sounding board that helps me see things from a different perspective and maybe find a new avenue, a new route that will help. And then the caregiving support group, as far as like at the senior center thing, they're all different ways of supporting yourself. They're all different ways of helping you find answers. They're all different ways of helping you navigate this difficult and challenging time. Don't do it alone. Do not do it alone. There are so many people out there going through similar issues, or they've had, they've been through it already, and they are more than happy, ready, and willing to extend their knowledge and support to you so that you can be a little lighter and see more, see, have a better understanding relieve your burden, light you up. Ooh, um, I think that's everything that I have on this topic right now. <laughs> the bottom line is find support, build support and write it down to remind yourself, who can I turn to? What can I see? What can I do to help myself through this? Thanks again for coming and joining me today. Thank you for listening to me as I talk about the importance of surrounding yourself with people who can lift you up. And I hope you come back next week for Louis Body Mindful Caregiving. And don't forget, what self-care are you doing to help yourself be the best caregiver that you can possibly be? Mm -hmm.